Good morning. You're listening to WIFO FM in Jessa, Big Dog Country Radio, 105.5 FM, four minutes after 8 o'clock here on this Thursday morning, 28th day of April. It is now time for the world famous Butch and Bob Show, brought to you by O'Quinn Associates Insurance and Financial, by Murphy Builder Supply, Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings, and First Southern Bank. Hi, Wayne and surrounding counties. This is Sean O'Quinn with O'Quinn and Associates. The one constant in life is change. Throughout our lives, we will go down roads that we never imagined. I have decided that it is time for me to make a change. I have decided to start my own independent insurance agency. What does this mean for you? Better rates and multiple companies. Give us a call at our new number, 912-385-1000, or stop by and see us. We are still at 212 South 1st Street, and we look forward to serving you. Since 1946, Murphy's Builder Supply has been serving the folks of Jessup, Wayne, and surrounding counties with quality products and knowledgeable service. Matter of fact, they feel they sell service first to make sure you get exactly what you need for your home improvement projects. And with each employee at Murphy's being there for 10 years or more, you know you're talking with someone with the experience to help you with building supplies, tools, paint, and all the things you need from a full-service hardware store. The best choice in home improvement is Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broad Street, Jessup. Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings in Wayne County is a popular thing. To dine or take out for one delicious meal, and with the low great prices, it's simply a steal. Famous for the variety of sauces, mild, wild, and saner inferno. When it's time to eat lunch or dinner, Damon's Restaurant the place to go. Located in the middle of town on West Cherry Street, yes, Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings simply can't be beat. So next time you're hungry and looking for a great meal, head to Damon's Restaurant and enjoy a great deal. The number to call is easy, 588-WING, 588-9464, the real thing. Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings, those chicken wings are a very popular thing. Hi, I'm Raymond Brown. And I'm Mandy Yeomans. At First Southern Bank, our customers are like family. As a locally owned community bank, we're dedicated to helping our clients succeed. We have loans for every need, whether it's personal or business. We have lines of credit, auto loans, equipment loans, and of course, we offer mortgages. Stop by our bank or call us at 912-588-1010 and see how First Southern Bank can help you. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. The following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcasting, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. World famous. The world famous World famous Butch and Bob Show. World famous Butch and Bob Show right here on WIFO 105.5 FM and Jessup Big Dog Country Radio. And Bob, uh, the late night last night, but worth it because we won both games in the first round of state playoff action. And the good news, we got a possibility of possibly playing at home on Tuesday if Woodland can beat St. Pius in his third game this afternoon at 4 o'clock. That'd go be, Woodland. Go Woodland. <laughs> go Woodland. That'd be a blessing in disguise. Wouldn't it be? Stay at home, get the big home crowd at Howard Bill Warren Field. Be nice to have a state playoff game at home. Yes, it would be. So Woodland, St. Pius this afternoon at 4 o'clock. And... Um, if St. Pius wins, we head there next week on Tuesday. If Woodland wins, they come here next week on Tuesday yeah. in the Sweet 16 action. We can only hope. Got my fingers crossed. Okay, let's go Woodland. All right, um, we got a, a guest in this morning here on the World Famous Butch and Bob Show. Bob, who yeah, do we, we have? we continue to bring the candidates in. we got local candidate for County Commission District 1, Brian Griffiths, in the studio. There's a three-person race in that race between Brian, Mike Gordon, and Stephen Jones, we've had Mike Warner, and still haven't had Stephen Jones in, but we're working on that. But, uh, Brian, tell us why you're running for county commissioner, and if you get elected, what would you like to see done? All right, well, first of all, thank you guys for letting us come in. You know, it's important for us to get our message out, give people an opportunity to kind of hear from us, to hear what we're about, and so I appreciate that. Um, well, for the, those of you who don't know me, I am Brian Griffiths. I've worked in town for about 10 years with an insurance firm here, and about two years ago I, I went to a firm based out of Savannah, but I work out of my house in Odom. What we have, the reasons I'm running, I say, is there's three reasons. I got a 12-year-old, a 9-year-old, and a 6-year-old. And in our house, we talk a lot about what kind of kids are we raising for the community. We, you know, and as a parent, you try to make them industrious and hardworking, able to walk out their faith, those things that are important to you. But as we've been talking the last several years, the other side of that coin has come up. It's not just what kind of kids are we leaving for our community, but what kind of community are we going to leave for our kids? Are they going to have the opportunity to go to college, technical school, you know, union apprenticeship? And when they do that, are they going to see Wayne County 
as a viable place to come back and live and play and work. And so it's that, that there used to be an old adage that where it all comes together. And are we really facilitating that? And so that's why we started um, talking about this campaign internally in our house. I think that in order to really help move the community further down that vision, right, so that they could come back, there's really four things we need to work on, in my opinion. It's accountability and transparency, right? If you look at, and, and it's, it, that's kind of a, a good tagline, but there's really some very simple things you could do. If you look at Glen County, glencounty.org is their website. You can go on and click and look at their SPLOS, and it shows how much the SPLOS recovered, what projects it went to, where those projects are. And we see that on the Wayne County um, Education, the Board of Education's website, very much like that. So there's a lot of transparency and accountability that we can bring in in that direction. That's something I think we've tried to do through the chamber a lot as well. When we've had PLL, we've had exit issues, we've had you know different forums as well, trying to give people an opportunity to interact. So that's something I have a lot of experience in, and something I think I can bring to the county. We need to address the budget, and we need to address the budget in the sense of uh, how do we look at make sure we're you know we're not overpaying anywhere. If there's not anything that we can kind of cut with the goal in mind of eventually cutting taxes down to a more manageable rate. I think that's a concern I hear a great deal in our district. We need to prioritize our spending. We need to aggressively, in that, in that going through the budget, excuse me, in that going through the budget, we need to aggressively fund a couple of things. Economic development is one of them. In the last four years, I've been on the IDA. I've had an opportunity to play a small role in a really great team. In the four years, we've seen seven expansion projects bring 273 new jobs in. The last expansion project, EAM, brought 75 jobs in at an average starting salary of $17 to $18 an hour. So these aren't minimum wage jobs. These are really, really great jobs we're bringing in. We need to continue to work to fund economic development. Um, we've got the project across the road from you guys, the new um, industrial park. Entrance to the industrial park from this side. That's right. Yeah. And then we've, yeah, you know, those projects have also seen $166 million in investment in Wayne County. And as those come onto the tax uh, roster, that's going to help us get away from having to levy property taxes. We'll continue to build that industrial base. The second thing we need to really look at aggressively funding is tourism and recreation. We need to think about strategically about how we, uh, we make the maximum use of our natural resources and how we increase our recreation of opportunities and that's really a twofold benefit the first is it gives our kids something to do today the second is when somebody comes in from out of town and they use our facilities they they enjoy our portion of the river when they spend that money that's a, a penny off of every dollar goes to your east loss a penny off every dollar goes to your county loss that's not including your local option taxes and that's not including any motel hotel taxes with a new hotel we have coming in and so when I was in leadership, Wayne, in 2009, there was a, a, a kind of a survey done of a, a local community that's similar to ours that said when they hold a three-day softball tournament, a three-day baseball tournament, they saw $250,000 of economic impact. That's, you know, them spending gas and them spending the hotels and the food. That's parents being tired of being at the ball field all day and going down to your downtown to go to local shops. And that community has been a hub, become a hub from Savannah to Jacksonville to bring their kids in and I think that we need to really excuse me we need to really look at how do we build Wayne County to be in a similar position we're geographically in a great spot because we are very central from Savannah to to Jacksonville and back over could really come here and we can really reap those benefits so that when we spend a single dollar in that recreation tourism sort of facility we're getting the benefit for our kids and we're getting the benefit from the tax revenue. And there's some great need and some different expansions that we could do. We have 60 kids in rec swimming right now that are at a private pool because we don't have a facility to house them. And so those are some things that we could sort of begin to really put in place. It's not really an abstract idea. Those are really specific plans of how do you grow from where we are to where we can be. The third spending priority that I believe that we should have are county employees. My wife is in staffing and she staffs for industrial partners. Her favorite saying and what she tells every one of her clients is, your ideal candidate for your job is already employed somewhere else. And we're in the tightest labor market we've ever seen. 
I told you we had an expansion that brought in 17 to 18 hour job, uh, 17 to 18 hour jobs. Um, if we continue to pay 11, 12, 13 dollars an hour, we're going to give our, our best our best employees the opportunity to go somewhere else, and we have to be careful with that. It's true we're you know we're losing law enforcement Applin. We lost a, a couple local law enforcement Evans and in Glen County. But we need to look at how we're compensating. And I'm not saying we can always match the private market, but what I'm saying is we've got to be aggressive in how we are in a creative in how we attract and retain the best help we can get. The county doesn't produce anything. It doesn't manufacture anything. What the county does is provide it provides services for its citizens. And every one of those services are provided by our employee base. And we've got to make sure that we have the best that we can have and that we've given them the opportunity to flourish and to be able to work for the county and be able to raise a family. And so I think that's so the three things so far are accountability and transparency, addressing the budget with a mind to, to, to reduce taxes as quickly as humanly possible, to prioritize our spending among economic development, recreation, tourism, and county employees. And the fourth thing is we really need to work on partnerships, not alliances. I don't know about you guys, but it feels like for the last little bit, I can watch five minutes of the first five minutes of a county meeting, and based on who's going to bring a proposal, I can tell you what the vote's going to be. And it just feels like to me that we kind of are set in stone a little bit bogged down, and we have the opportunity now, especially with so many races running, to really bring a collaboration that's not been there for a little bit. Collaborate not just among the county, but you know among our three cities, our industrial partners, um, with the Chamber of Commerce. And so those, those are things that we've, that I've sort of had a hand in in the last little bit in 10 years, 15 years I've been working. And, um, and so that's what it is. That's our whole platform is just getting in there, trying to be smart about what we're doing, strategic about moving county forward. And, you know, choosing a run is not something we've taken lightly. We're building a house, we're building careers, we're raising our family, we're acting in our community. We're living at the ball field right now with uh, my little Odom Recreation ball player. But uh, we, we know we just want to take those experiences and take those concerns and, and help build a community that's ready to receive our children when they come home. And just join, if you just join us, Brian Gross in the studio running for County Commissioner in District 1. Again, early voting starts on May uh, 2nd, which is this coming Monday. Uh, the primary is set for May 24th. It'll be decided. Uh, it might be a runoff because there's three people in the race, but all three are running as, as Republican in the county or partisan races. So you're all three on the Republican ballot. And you mentioned the meetings. Uh, have you been to many meetings for the county? Um, no, I have not been in person meetings. We usually follow them online. Okay. So I said you've seen, I said there's been a history of 3 2 votes. So, you know, how do you bring harmony to the board if you get elected? Well, I think first it's it starts with 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 sitting down individually. I mean, there's there's you know it's like business. The only way you do business is you have to sit down with people and really learn each individual and say, look, you know, we're all here for what we. I do believe that everybody believes that they're acting in the best interest of the county, and so it's sitting down and having some hard conversations and saying, look, you're you're protected, you're safe. I hear what you're saying how do we meld how we mold what you and I want together into a common vision and I think there's listen look at how many campaigns are running on accountability and transparency right now that's a common thing that we can hit how many campaigns and how many of the commissioners are running on um, cutting down the, the expenses so that we can alleviate some of the tax burdens those are those are easy low-hanging fruit that we can begin to work on immediately and, and to bring those agreements and I think it's first it's looking at what do we share in common rather than differentiations. And if we can build the things we share in common, then we can pick up a little bit of steam along and along. And that's, you know, that's how you, you know, selling advertisement or anything inside of business. You have to get in there and build that rapport. And it's, you know, it's tough work sometimes, but it's it's good work. You mentioned the budget and cutting taxes again. Recently they had the five mil increase, but they've been slowly lowering that. But you know, the pet peeve of me, you know, I've said this for years, is. The county every year has that tax anticipation that we have to go out and borrow money before the year begins. They don't do it in the school board. They don't do it in any city government. So I don't understand why the county does it. But how do you, you know, you're talking about increasing pay for the employees mm -hmm. and then cutting. How, I mean, how do you balance that? How do you do both? 
Well, I think that part of that lies in the fact that, you know, four to five years ago, our budget was $18 million. It's $27 million now. We have increased revenues. It comes into really looking at a line-by-line uh, review of the budget, going through every single line, every single department, and saying, hey, where is there that we can come in there and trim down? Because, again, it's like in your house. You've got a set paycheck coming in at the end of the month. You know what your paycheck's going to be for that 30 days. You have to look at not only what's there, what are your needs, what are your wants, and you have to prioritize them. And I'm telling you, there's going to, you know, we're going to come in and prioritize three different areas. It's going to be on economic development, it's going to be on tourism, and it's going to be on county employees as far as, you know, my vote's going to be. That's because those are the things that help bring revenue into the county as far as economic development and tourism. And again, county, the county doesn't produce anything. We're, we live on the backbone of our workforce, and we've got to protect that. I think we shift and we say before we talk through anything else, that's the first three things we fund, and then you back into your other funding opportunities. It's not, it's not sort of rocket science. Every single one of us has done this at our home in our own checkbooks, and that's the sort of business mentality we have to have on that board in order to be able to do this. What's your thoughts on the uh, proposal for the new uh, courthouse plans? I mean, everybody wants you know, the school system's talking new stadium. They're still talking pool. Now they're talking courthouse. I mean, there's only so much money to go around. So where, where does the local option sales tax money go? Well, you know, the, the, the challenges, there are a lot of are a lot of challenges there. I mean, there's a lot of priorities we could have, and so we have to come together to figure out what's important for us. I'm afraid that the, the courthouse is a significant challenge, and it's going to be a significant priority. They did, as far as I understand, a year ago we did an RFP, a, a request for proposal for sort of a needs analysis. And what they really came out to, there are some security issues with how we load prisoners in from the side of the courthouse, which is next door to the church. And obviously there's children now that weren't there in 1975 when that kind of arrangement was set up. There's, um, and there's some security issues on judges. But the other part about it is we have five courts in Wayne County. You have a superior court, a state court, a, ju- a probate, a magistrate, and a juvenile, right? So the state and the superior court both have two different calendars each. They have a civil calendar and a criminal calendar. So among those five courts, there's seven separate calendars. You add in there's also a drug court and a parental accountability court. That means there's nine calendars, judicial calendars, that have to be kind of rotated in through two courtrooms. I don't know how to do that. I can tell you that when I have, uh, when it's just me and my wife and we have a kid in cheerleading and one kid that's supposed to be at the ball field and one kid picked up from karate all at 530, that in itself is pretty challenging. So to have nine calendars rotating through, I mean, that's problematic. When you also consider the fact that a criminal trial has a civil right attached to it, you have a right to a jury and you have a right to a speedy trial. So taking the scenario when you have, you know, say you have a business who is pulled into a lawsuit, if they need court time in order to adjudicate that, it takes a lower precedent down to the criminal, which then begins to sort of extend how long your civil trials go, which is what you're seeing in Atlanta and Savannah and some of those larger metro areas. And so that's something that we need to be cognizant of. I absolutely agree that there's a lot on the table. And we, again, it goes back down to priorities, but we've got to say this is what's important. I th- we have got to dedicate more of our spots to that that courtroom project. I'm not in favor of of, I've heard some pretty flexible numbers to put it kindly Um, there's a great but I've heard those numbers are more speculative right now we're not exactly sure how much it is so let's do the work of figuring out what the what the projects are going to cost let's look at you know again being creative creative about how we use existing buildings how we um, supplement that how we how we make that project there work where it is and then build upon that and Brian Grissom studio again we asked Candidates all the time. They said early voting begins Monday, and they'll go to District One. Uh, first of all, tell us where, where is District One? What what's, what that what does that encompass? The way I think about it is, you you start about halfway down Holmesville and go up to Odom Road South. You're gonna come all the way through Odom, all the way through Madry Springs to the river. Come back down 169, uh, follow it all the way from the Appling County border all the way down to about Red Hill Road. 
There's one little arm that reaches out and touches Placid Acres and it pulls South Forest Drive and it pulls that all the way back through down uh, Red Hill to Bethesda and Bethesda back to Tank and then Tank back into Odom to kind of complete that circle. So it really is that whole north northwestern corner of our county. It's pretty wide, a pretty a large district, a lot of voters. But so when they go into the polls on Monday and they see the three names on there, why should they vote for Brian Griffiths or County Commissioner District 1? Well, I think it's uh, a couple different reasons. One, um, we've got a, a, a genuine idea that we want to put into place, a genuine plan. It's about implementing accountability and transparency and giving you examples on what I mean by that. It's about reprioritizing the budget um, with the economic development, with tourism, with county employees. It's about you know building that partnership and that alliance. And here's the thing. And I, I say this confidently, that in the sense that we've been in the, I've been in the uh, sort of public in Wayne County for 12 years. I've been a part of the chamber, up to including chairman. I've been a part of Industrial Development Authority. I've been in a political party for six years. I think when people look and they say, it's really easy to look at people who come up and say, run for office and say, you know, how do I know this person's going to do what they say they're going to do once they get in office? Nothing I've talked about is new. I, this is the sort of the life that we've been able to have in public service for the last 10 to 15 years, and I'm going to continue that track record for another 10 to 15 years. I'd like to do it inside the county commission, but at the end of the day, I'm always going to work to see if I can make Wayne County a great place for my kids to return home to. Just on a personal note, like I said, we talk about leadership Wayne all the time. They have that, you know, it's a good program, but the question I keep asking, where are the leaders? Where are they, why aren't they running? It's, I'm glad to see somebody that came from leadership Wayne at least to say, I'm going to use that and try to get into the leadership role. So mm -hmm. I commend you for that. But wish you the best of luck. Appreciate you coming in. And uh, again, early voting starts on Monday, May 2nd, runs to the 20th. And the two Saturday early voting is uh, May 7th and May 14th from 9 to 5. And again, all the early voting taking place at the Hall Richardson Recreation Center. Brian, again, appreciate you coming in. Best of luck. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. All right, Bob, anything else? You, okay. That didn't show? No, but we can end it right now if you want to. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> okay. All right. World famous Butch and Bob show right here on WIFO 105.5 FM in Jessup. Brought to you by O'Quinnon Associates uh, Insurance and Financial and by Murphy Builder Supply, Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings, and First Southern Bank.